Why is my home so hot? Why is my air conditioning not working? How do I make my home more energy efficient? We hear these questions a lot. And in Florida, you want your home as energy efficient as possible, not just for your own comfort, but to save money on your energy bill, especially during our brutally hot summers. We are Greg Nelson and Dominique Nelson, and we are the owners of Nelson Construction and Renovations in Clearwater, Florida. We're going to give you a few ways you can make your home more energy efficient that you can include in your next renovation or new build. So there are many components involved in a home to make it energy efficient. One of the main ones is the air conditioning system. In this home, we actually have two separate systems. You have the tonnage needed to cool the square footage of the home, but you also have the SEER rating, which is the Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. That is, if you get that real high, then you have very energy efficient. Generally, they have two speeds on their fans, um, and it costs a lot less on your energy bill to keep the house cool. They run a lot more efficient. A lot of homes use 14 and 16 SEER. This particular one is a 20 SEER system. Um, so having a very high SEER rating and having the proper tonnage that's required to cool the home is very important. And you might ask, how, how do I know how much tonnage I need to cool my space? Well, whenever we do a project, we usually hire our HVAC contractor or a separate engineer to do something called an energy calculation on the home. And it's kind of a detailed uh, piece of software that they use and they just enter in information such as how much square footage is the home, how many square feet of glass is on the home, how well and what is it insulated with, uh, what type of windows you're using and that sort of thing. And that then tells the mechanical engineer you need this much tonnage uh, to cool the space uh, properly. And then from there you can, as the homeowner or the builder, you can decide, well, how efficient do we want that to be? And then you can go there. So you have those two main things. So this is a, a register box right here. This is where the drywall will go around here and the air grill, which is usually a white grill, will get installed here after the painting of the drywall is done. This box here, some people call it a boot uh, or a register box. This is a termination point. This is the flex duct. Flex duct is basically an inner core, a spiral plastic duct with wire spiral so it doesn't get collapsed. And then this shiny stuff on the outside is about R6. Uh, and it's fiberglass with a reflective insulation. It's like a sock, essentially, that goes around the inner core. So what happens is, if this doesn't get slid down all the way down tight to the back of this register box, right down in here, uh, then the cold freezing air that's in here will start to cool your attic. You want all that cold air to not come out above the ceiling. You want it to come out down here. So a lot of guys will pull it down and they're in a hurry and they and they leave and go to the next one or I don't know. But it's important. There's an actual technology. There's a specific sequence and a, 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 an actual code of standards, believe it or not, on the exact way that you terminate this sock to the back of this register, this flex duct. And you got to, you know, without getting too technical, it, it's a, a sequence of a special strap and then tape and then duct sealant uh, to make sure that it never gets pulled off by another trade or slides up over time or anything. So that all the cold air just comes out of here. Now in this particular house, you'll notice we have insulation up right against the roof deck. So that adds something also incredibly uh, energy efficient for this particular home because now you have these ducts that are technically in the attic, but this attic is not going to be 110 degrees like most attics are. This duct is now an environment that's in the envelope of the insulation. The thermal barrier is up here, and the duct is below it. In a lot of houses, you have the drywall goes right here, and you've got blown-in fiberglass or bats right here, and that's your thermal barrier. And then you've got a very hot attic, and then you've got your ducts running in that hot attic and you've got all your cold air running in your ducts and you're basically crossing your fingers that there's not one little pinhole or anything wrong with your ducts because you'll lose a lot of energy efficiency that way. You have a lot more chance for vapors and moisture to build up when you have that really hot air around that duct. So we've kind of done a double whammy on this house. We've got really well connected boots, flex ducts to the registers in the boots. 
We've got a thermal barrier up above it. This particular house is called a non-vented roof system. So the roof and the attic isn't vented. It's, uh, there's, no, there's no soffit vents. There's no vents at the ridge. The whole envelope of the house, all the way up to right above the plywood deck, is all insulated with, um, with the spray foam, which we'll talk to you about later. There are many different kinds of insulation. We'll go over a few of them here. The first one is one you're probably most familiar with, which is a fiberglass insulating material. There are many different products. Uh, this is just one example. Um, now this is used on an interior wall, mainly for sound deadening, but you can think of insulation like a blanket. So it will obviously maintain the temperature control in the room, but this is also used for sound deadening. This is another insulation product, formaldehyde-free, also used for thermal and sound control. So this was used on this interior wall. And then up there you can see more fiberglass insulation. And another kind of insulation is called spray foam. There are two different kinds of spray foam. This is called open cell foam which just means that it has a rubber material in it that expands kind of like bubbles and uh, makes the cells open so it's permeable. And this was used to create a thermal barrier on the, uh, within the roof system here. And it also makes the roof stronger, it ties everything together. But uh, that's very well insulated all the way up there in the attic. For those of you that don't know what R value is, um, it means resistance to heat. So basically, um, back in the pioneer days when they would build a cabin or a structure, they would take your, your wall studs and in between them, they would stack solid blocks of wood or logs or what have you. And for every inch of solid wood, you would have one R is the, is the rule of thumb. So nowadays you can get like, for instance, on this home, We've got some fiberglass, um, it's R30 and it's only six inches thick. So it gives you an idea, instead of having 30 inches of wood, we've got six inches of fiberglass. Now on this foam, we've got uh, about five and a half, six inches of foam. In this particular home, this is an R20 foam system. However, it outperforms R38 because it's open cell foam. There's a spe very specific technical reason for that. Uh, if anybody wants to know what that is, you can message us and we'll let you know. But this is an R38, um, and it's right up against the outer shell of the house, and it gives us excellent insulation. In fact, it's 46 degrees right now, believe it or not, in Florida. We have no systems on right now. I think it's about 74 degrees in here. It's pretty warm. Um, as soon as you go outside, it's like a slap in the face with cold. And my only point in bringing that up is, is that the house, the envelope is so insulated that it it just is doing its job it's keeping what we want in the house and what we don't want out of the house so reversely in the summer it's going to do an amazing job of keeping the cool inside and the hot the, the hot outside and in conjunction with the extremely energy efficient air conditioning system and every duct connection being really well done it's just going to make for an extremely energy efficient home The other part of having a really energy efficient home is having a, a really good windows. Um, you, lots of different brand names out there. I don't need to go into the brands particularly. Every brand's got a really good one and a really bad one. Some of them have really bad ones and really bad ones, but these are Pella. They're really good. They've got a good name. Anderson, Jelvin, all those window brands are good. But this is a double pane uh, with the low E Aragon gas in there. and. Um, very, very energy efficient. Um, you know, it can be uh, last summer uh, was when we put them in, uh, we were, the, the, the sun was beating outside. You, you couldn't even really feel the heat on the glass. It was so good, you know. Um, these are also happen to be low missile impact glass because we're in Florida, so windborne debris. So they just become very, very efficient. Um, also, you'll notice the edges here, we, we spray foam the edges <coughs> to make sure that that's sealed. So that, you know, the, the, the gap that needs to be there for shimming and everything for the, for the, for the, the stock on the window here, it, uh, it, there's always going to be a gap when you install a window and then you've got to spray foam it.
Okay, another thing that we did in this particular house is um, we did what's called core foam, and we injected foam into the CMU block walls. So the concrete masonry units, that's what CMU is, uh, basically concrete blocks. The first level of this house is all built masonry with concrete blocks. Generally, the cells with the steel rebar are the only ones that get poured solid. So you got a lot of, you, generally you have a lot of hollow cells um, that need, that don't have, you know, the, I think be, between the drywall and the outside of the siding, you usually get about R5 or 6 maybe. Um, what, we're, what we did in this house was we can see here where this orange is, is we, we had a company come in and drill a hole into each hollow cell. And then they have a machine with a valve and they stick it in there and open the valve and it just shoots foam all up inside uh, all of these cells. And essentially what we did was is we, we put the thermal barrier to the outside of the house and we made it a full R8 uh, just in the block. So then we also have this foam uh, and then the siding. So we're probably somewhere around R12 on the block walls, which is almost unheard of for masonry walls. A lot of these houses that are built in the 50s, they didn't even pour a lot of the vertical cells with concrete. So um, it's a really easy way to make your house more energy efficient. If you have an old house that has, you know, plaster walls or whatever, you can have a company come in and inject, inject the, the block core foam. I believe you can do it into wood walls as well. It doesn't have an extremely heavy expansion capacity, so it won't make your drywall or plaster walls bulge or anything like that. Um, but that is with in conjunction with the spray foam on the top of the roof and and then all the block core injection that we did in this house this is extremely energy efficient